Welcome to CS320, Chapter 21, where we'll talk about Minsky's theorem and two-stack pushdown automatas. So these are exactly like the pushdown automatas we studied before, except we're going to add a second pushdown stack. And over here, we have a, a pushdown automata that accepts a to the n, b to the n, a to the n. Now, obviously, a two-stack pushdown automata can do everything a one-stack pushdown automata does because you just don't use the second stack and you pretty much have the same machine. But when we add a second pushdown to stack, we can actually accept more languages. Remember, this language is non-context-free, meaning we can't accept it with the pushdown automata. But this uh, does accept a to the n, b to the n, a to the n by first counting up the A's, so every A we read off of the input tape, we push an A onto the first stack. Then as we start reading B's, we make sure it matches the number of A's in the beginning by popping an A off the stack, but we're also able to push B's onto the second stack. Notice the push two there, meaning we're gonna use stack two. So as we counted A's onto stack one on the second stack, we'll count the B's while we ma make sure these A's match these B's. Then in the end, we're gonna read the final A's off of the stack, popping um, the B's off of the stack um, here. Make sure there are no extra A's on the stack or else we, we have more A's than B's but then we pop the Bs off of the stack for every A that we read, and then we make sure that the second stack is empty and we accept the word. So what does this mean with our uh, Turing machines that we have and our post machines? Well, a two stack push down automata is basically the same uh, uh, power as a Turing machine. Everything we can define with the Turing machine can be defined with the two-stack pushdown automata, and a two-stack pushdown automata, we can define it with the Turing machine. So how are we gonna prove that? Well, I'm gonna show you how to make a Turing machine that will simulate a two-stack pushdown automata, and then we're gonna show how a post machine can stimulate a two-stack, or how a, a two-stack pushdown automata can simulate a post machine. Okay, so a two-stack pushdown automata has an input uh, tape or where we eat our imp where we read our input word on. Uh, when we start running the machine, the input word is on this tape, and we have two stacks. A Turing machine will start with its uh, with the input word on the tape, and of course we have an infinite number of blanks going that way, and a tape head pointing at the first character. So the very first thing that we're going to do so that this Turing machine simulates a post machine is we're going to insert a character onto the front of our uh, tape. And we'll go ahead and insert a blank or something. Now, this is just to make sure that we don't accidentally fall off the left side of our uh, tape and so that we can find the beginning of our input word. Next, we're going to move our tape head down to the end, and then we'll insert a hashtag, and that marks the end of the input word right here. And we don't really need to insert it. We're just going to erase the last blank and put a hashtag. And then following that, we're going to go ahead and put on a, a dollar sign. So now what we have here in between the hashtag and the dollar sign will be room to store stuff on our stack one. And after the dollar sign will be room to store stuff on stack two. And then we're going to move our tape head and make sure it points at the hashtag. So here's our home base right here. Now the, the two stack push down automata will perform one of three operations. It'll either read something off of the input tape push something onto stack one, push something onto stack two. So those are the three operations, actually two more is to pop something off of stack one and pop something off of stack two. So let's go ahead and review all of those uh, things. So what we'll do, if we're going to read something off of our input tape, we're going to move our tape head. 
bounce off of the blank at the beginning and go ahead and read the first character and turn it into a blank. Then as the post machine uh, branches based on what it read, the Turing machine can branch the same way. Then after we're done, we return the tape head to the hashtag, which is our home base. Now let's say that we push something onto stack one. Well, that's easy. We just move the tape head over until uh, over one character to the right of this, and then just ins run the insert routine and insert something for our stack one. Now, what about stack two? We'll just move the tape head to the dollar sign and then insert something right there. What about pop off of stack one? Well, we, after every operation, we're always returning the tape head to the hashtag. So if we're gonna pop something off of stack one, just move it to the left here and pop. If it happens to be the dollar sign or read it off, if it happens to be the dollar sign, then we know we popped in one of the infinite blanks. But if it's something else, uh, then we just branch on based on what we pop. And we do something similar for uh, stack two. And of course, there's an infinite number of blanks over here that I haven't drawn that can be the infinite number of blanks that we can pop off of stack two. And now we pretty much done it. We can simulate a two stack push down uh, automata on a Turing machine. Now, another thing, what if we add a third push down stack? Well, of course we could just add another character over here and simulate three push down stacks as well. So now we know that we could take any two stack push down automata and convert it into a Turing machine or at least a Turing machine that will simulate what that two stack push down automata does. So we know that these two stack push down automatas will not be able to do anything that a Turing machine can't do. So now it's time to prove that a two stack push down automata can do everything that a Turing machine can do. Now we already know that a Turing machine and a post machine are basically the same from our previous lesson. And this is a lot easier to explain how a post machine can get simulated by a two-step pushdown automata than a Turing machine. Mostly because the two machines are kind of similar in that a post machine has this input tape that it reads from the front. Of course, it, it adds uh, characters onto the back. Now this two-step pushdown automata also has an input tape that has the, the word to the input word, and then it has two stacks. So what we do, or what we're going to do is, uh, to simulate this post machine is step one is we're gonna read all of the words off of our tape and push them down onto our first stack. So we're gonna read all the characters off. So we'll read the a off and push it here, then this A and push it here, and then this A and push it here, and then the three Bs as well. Now, if you notice, the word is now backwards with the front of the word at the bottom of the stack and the back of the word at the top. Well, that's okay because we have this other stack and we could go ahead and pop this word off of the stack and push it down onto that stack to get it facing the right way. So now all of our A, the Bs get pushed on first, and then the three A's get pushed on last, and I'll go ahead and erase it off of here. So basically what we did is we took the word and we pushed it down onto this stack, and then after we push it on that stack, we pushed it back this way, so that the first character is now on the second stack. So now when we wanna read from the front, well, we just pop off the second stack. And that's, a, so if, we, if the post machine says read off of the front, then we just pop the top character off of the second stack. Now, what if the post machine wants to add a character onto the back? That's the only other operation it does. So what we do is we move all of these, we pop all the characters off of the second stack, push it onto the first stack, so now it's backwards again on this first stack, but then we can pop or, or push the character that we want to insert on the back, and then take this and push it back that way. So if we want to push a character, say, um, C onto this stack here, then we would push all of these over here, the C would get pushed on at the bottom, and then 
we would take everything on our uh, stack over here, pop it off and push it back over on there. And now we have the C at the back with this being here at the front. So as you can see, it's pretty easy for a two stack push down automata to simulate the post machine. So let's kind of go into a progression here. First of all, we had finite automatas. And the finite automatas only had what state they're in as memory. And remember, we use that state, like a state that said that we've seen two Bs in a row or three Bs in a row. However, these states were finite because we have a finite number of states and uh, then we only have a finite amount of memory we can uh, have. And that's what prevented us from being able to uh, define languages like A to the N, B to the N, because we needed an infinite number of memory to be able to count the number of A's. But anyway, we moved on and we moved on to uh, push down automatas. Now, push down automatas have an infinite amount of memory, but their problem is, is the memory wasn't random access. We could only access the last spot used in our infinite amount of memory. And that's what limited us so that we couldn't uh, create languages A to the N, B to the N, A to the N. We couldn't define these languages because we, even though we had an infinite amount of memory in a pushdown stack, there was no way to um, access that memory. It was, as soon as we want, if we want to access something at the end of the memory, we had to erase this first. So that was its limitation. But finally, we moved on to Turing machines, post machines, and two stack pushdown automatas. And what these have are random access memory. With random access memory, whether it be a Turing machine where we can move the tape head to wherever we wanted, a post machine where we can rotate characters around to be able to get where we wanted, or a two-stack pushdown automata that could kind of take our memory and bounce it between these two stacks to get where we wanted, we're finally able to define all the languages that we've been able to think of so far. So we can do A to the N, B to the N, A to the N, and we could keep going B to the N, A to the N. There's no pattern like this that will make it, it impossible for one of these three machines to be able to define one of these languages. So of course, the next question is, is there any limitation to one of these uh, machines? Can we define all languages with one of these three machines? And that's what we're gonna explore. But before we explore that, let's try to see if we can somehow change the rules of these machines and make them more powerful. And that's what our le next lecture is gonna be about to see if we can make a better Turing machine. Now there might be a Turing machine that's more efficient and easier to use, but we want to make a Turing machine that's more powerful. So start thinking of things that you can do to either a Turing machine, post machine, or push down automata to make that machine more powerful.